Greetings and salutations, YouTube. This is your friendly neighborhood armchair philosopher, Fragments of Memory. Um, a long time ago, I read this really good book series called From Niggas to God. And with the election cycle and some of the YouTube vids I've been watching about the departure from Blackistan, it's, and etc. I thought about this book from Niggas to Gods by a brother named Akil. And it was a collection of essays that he wrote around 1992. And although this was back in the 90s, I believe it will be apropos for today. Um, and one of the essays was called Crack and Christ. And in this particular essay, he compared the preacher in the church to as being comparable to the drug dealer in a crack house. The preacher selling hope and the drug dealer selling dope. And of course, both, ah, excuse me, both the religion and the drugs are to keep the user of those things pacified, effete, and numb to everything around them, keeping them inactive. Do I agree with everything that was said by the brother Akil? No. He does make valid points that both drugs and religion have been used to pacify the masses. Uh, I believe it was Karl Marx, um, a big proponent of communism, I think the founder of the communist school of thought, once referred to religion as the opiate of the masses. But where I have to part ways respectfully, of course, with that brother, because those books did open my eyes to a lot of things, is that faith is an important factor. And I believe if no one had any faith or hope, our lives would be filled with just straight up despair. If we didn't have anything. I, I subscribe to the words often spoke by the late great motivational speaker Zig Ziglar. Uh, he would always say, if there is hope in the future, there is power in the present. So for me, faith is more the gasoline. It's, the, it's to the car. It's the fuel and the momentum for the rocket going into space. Now, faith and hope alone is just aimless wandering. But faith coupled with action is a, is, a, is a wonderful and beautiful thing. In the religion of Islam, we're, we're taught this. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he taught his followers. He was sitting with some Bedouin Arabs. And the Bedouin Arabs were all like, you know, I'm going to tie my camp, or I'm going to let my camel roam free and trust it to Allah. And of course, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, no, you don't do that. You, you, you trust in Allah, but you also tie your camel. Um, he would also say in other hadith accounts that the hand that gives is better than the one that receives. So I take that to mean that if I'm in a position to give, that means I have money, which most likely means I worked for that money. Um, as opposed to the man that might be having being put in a situation where he has to beg for something. Um, there's even another hadith account which talks about how there was a man who was just praying. He didn't go, he didn't work. Other people fed him, other people clothed him. And of course, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, related to the, to the people that were giving him all these things that you're better than him. You go out and work. So... Even in Islam that teaches you have faith in the creator, pray five times a day. This same religion also says, hey, be practical. Don't spend all your day praying. Pray when you need to, pray, pray when you're prescribed to, but also go out here and work. Uh, Christianity, you know, in the book of James, in the general epistle of James, faith without works is dead. As the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. Um, even in Judaism, in the, in the, in the so-called Old Testament, or the Hebrew Scriptures, which would then dovetail into Christianity. A man who doesn't work doesn't eat. So I don't think religion, the, the, the three Abrahamic faiths in their, in their dogma, in their doctrine, teach passivity. However, I think that the way it's presented, the way it's packaged and handed to us and served up to us, that's what makes it gives us the passivity. Now it bothers me when someone such as a Sergeant Willie P tries to make re religion the sole cause of black docility and passivity. Now I do see how things are packaged and presented. The preacher 
is that it seems in the black church to entertain you. He wants to give you a good message and warm, fuzzy feelings. Even though many sayings in Christianity, idle hands are the devil's workshop. And of course, of course, we just want to feel good. So the preacher gives us the feel good message. And from reading the, both the, the Quran and the Bible, sometimes they teach some harsh lessons. And yes, there are miracles in the Bible. There are miracles in Quran. There are there are accounts where God acted on some straight Deus ex machina type stuff. But then there's other times where the people had to sort it out. Even Garvey said, you know, even Marcus Garvey, who was a big proponent of a belief in God and reading your Bible, even he said that yes, you still need to get up and go out and build things. God has already given you the tools that you need. Now you need to go out and do something with them tools i.e. your hands, i.e. your ability to go out and seek for information, your ability to go out and do. He's saying, don't sit there. In every black movement I've read, I've, I've studied, and even in my Fahami movement, and I've talked about this in other videos, when I was part of the Fahami movement, one of the things that the founder of the Fahami movement said was, to dwell in the land of dreams without physical or mental activity is to sojourn in the fool's paradise. So... I believe it is a matter of presentation when it comes to the religion aspect of our of our existence. You know what I mean? It's not just it's not just the religion itself. It is how it is who's teaching it, how it's being presented, and then of course how it's being packaged and sold to us. Now we can dispute the truth claims of any religion, faith, or movement all day long, but at its core, I don't think Christianity, Islam, Judaism teach just sit down and just pray about it and then do nothing. That's foolish. The Bible says it, the Quran says it, the Torah says it, so I can't buy into that fully. Do I believe that religion has been, people hide behind their religion to excuse inaction or cowardice? Yes. But do I think that the religion itself, in their teachings, in their dogma, encourage that sort of cowardice not by a long shot well that's just my two cents on the situation um rate subscribe leave your feedback please tell me what you think peace